not available at this time. While corrections are being made, we bring you the following film. The second quarter play where they did seem to make some first downs, possess the ball, and uh, get some time of possession. Otherwise, uh, it, it would have been all San Antonio the first half. Most of the highlights of the first half are from the San Antonio gunslingers. Take a look. The Panthers did a good job defensively holding them out of the end zone here. Good play by Ron Osborne, the secondary man. Osborne does a good job of stripping the ball away from number 81, Hackett, the tight end. But uh, I maintain that this defense is the type of defense that will bend, but very seldom does it break. They got close, but they couldn't score. So Nick Mickemeyer came in, and these are the only points of the game. Mickemeyer from the 17-yard line hits a 27-yarder, and the Panthers at that point were down with no time left in the first quarter, three to nothing. Then the Panthers get a break, get inside the five-yard line, but cannot score on a number of occasions and really take the lead. A lot of mistakes uh, in the offensive line. They got down once to the three-yard line. Here you'll see Bobby Hebert uh, throwing the ball. I thought Hebert should have kept on the move to put more pressure on the defensive secondary. He didn't. He pulled up he, and threw the ball, and it was broken up. The guy was well covered in the end zone. Here, Novo Bojovic on a, a very short uh, chip shot type field goal, pulls the ball to the right, and uh, the Panthers come up without any score whatsoever. Panthers had three chances inside the five, could not get it in. And it was 3 nothing. Here's another chance. Mike Ulmer, the San Antonio deep receiver, fumbles the football. Ray Bentley picks it. He's not allowed to advance it, but from great field position, the Panthers fumbled it back when Bobby Bear went down injured. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. You can see here that the time of possession appears to be relatively even. 15 minutes for the Gunslingers, 14 uh, for the Panthers. But I want to tell you, the, uh, the first quarter stats were like 13 minutes for the Gunslingers, a minute 50 for the Panthers. We will be back with second half action, and we'll take up that story about Bobby Bear's injury and see if he's back in the ball game in the second half. Stay with us. We've got USL football for you live from San Antonio. We are back to open the second half from San Antonio's Alamo Stadium. Novo Boyovich kicking deep into the end zone. Taking it is Mike Ulmer, and he will not return it. So the San Antonio Gunslingers will take over first and 10 from their own 20. They have the lead and the ball opening the second half of action. Once again, we will apologize to all of our viewers in Detroit for the technical problems that we have had here in San Antonio actually locating the satellite to get our signal back to Channel 50 and our USFL football viewers in Detroit. We hope that for the rest of the broadcast, things will go along as smoothly uh, as they can possibly go because it has not been a good night for myself and Dennis Franklin up here in the booth trying to find that satellite and get on the air. First and 10, San Antonio. They lead 3-0. Rick Neuheisel in at quarterback. The give to Don Roberts. Roberts seeing his first action of the game. Mike Hagan played Robert most of the first half for the Gunslingers at fullback. Let's set the San Antonio offense for you now. Up front, it's Lee Spivey and Ralph Williams at tackle. Rich Garza and Arlen Thompson at the guards. Bill Winters is the center. The wideouts are Jerry Gordon and Glenn Starks. Joey Hackett is the tight end. Neuheisel is the quarterback. Marcus Bonner. No, it is not Bonner. Now it is. Mike Hagan and Don Roberts, a pair of fullbacks, are the setbacks. Second down and six. The give to Roberts. He gets nowhere as Kyle Borland comes over and puts the finishing touches on the tackle that was started by Robert Pennywell. Actually, a loss on the play, knocking him back a yard. It'll be third down and seven. Saw a set on that second down play, Jimmy, two tight ends, and uh, uh, that's the first time I've seen that, but particularly in a long yardage situation. It was second and eight, and we've not seen that formation, so apparently San Antonio is trying to set something up, maybe a play action pass out of the two tight end formation. The Panthers come with their nickel defense, bringing in Bobby Futrell 
Will Coakley and Mike Edwards. The end around to Gordon. He's got lots of room. He's got the first down. Brought down over there by Coakley. One of the reasons why this play worked, Jimmy, they set it up well. You'll see the ball being handed off to Bonner and uh, Neuheisel there making a good block on 57 Corker. But the play worked because John Corker, maybe we'll see him here, goes after the, follows the flow of the ball. He's supposed to stay at home and guard against swing like a reverse and uh, they kind of sucked him in. And once they got him in, Neuheisel made the block and uh, San Antonio picked up the first down. The ball is spotted at the 39-yard line of the Panthers, of the San Antonio, rather. Pass over the middle to Hackett. Hackett's free in the secondary. Brought down on a touchdown-saving tackle from Ray Bentley. First and 10, San Antonio, and the gunslingers are coming out, shooting from the hip. Quick pop pass, number seven to number 81, Joey Hackett. And Ron Osborne, number 23, tried to hand tackle the big fella, Joey Hackett, the 6'4", 255-pound tight end. Watch Neuheisel get rid of the ball quickly. And that's what really helped make that play, along with uh, Hackett doing an excellent job of running the football, breaking the tackle of Ron Osborne. First down, San Antonio. Ball spotted at the 12-yard line. Marcus Bonner and Hagen are the setbacks. Hagen gets the call, gets it up almost to the 10-yard the line. Ball. There is a flag down, however. The tackle made by Kyle Borland of the Panthers. We'll wait and see what the flag is. It will be against San Antonio, and it will be a big one, 15 yards. It will put them back at the 22. Foley, number 60 on the offense, still first down. Ten-yard penalty, rather, and it will take him back to the 22-yard line. The call is holding on center Bill Winters. First and 20 at the 22. New Heisel now operates out of the shotgun. We have seen them run a couple of draws in the first half out of this formation. Fake the draw, Heisel the throw. Going deep. Incomplete intended for Gordon. Jerry Gordon was open for a moment. No, that's 82, Daryl Crane. Daryl Crane, number 82, was open for a moment. New Heisel overthrew it. I think the fake, Jim, was very effective. Uh, caught the linebackers by surprise. Caught, it, it caused them to stay at home. And uh, But Crane drew double coverage from uh, Osborne and uh, Vito McKeever. Back in the far corner, I thought it was a, a, a good, a well-thrown ball, but uh, Crane couldn't hold on for the six. Second down and 20. Neuheisel again in the uh, shotgun. He's got Crane to the right. Going deep for Gordon. Gordon, touchdown. was the man covering, but it was one of those fake patterns, one-on-one -on -one coverage with Oliver Davis, and Jerry Gordon caught the perfect pass from New Heisel for the touchdown. Gordon came into this game, Jim, as the leading receiver for the San Antonio offense. You can see here he's got a step on Oliver Davis, and New Heisel did an excellent job of leading his receiver, giving him an opportunity to run under the ball. The linebackers were blitzing. You'll see Pennywell there, but it's much too late, and... Uh, Neuheisel just laid the ball up and, and uh, let uh, Gordon run in it for the touchdown. And that pass was thrown into a win. Here is Mickemeyer with the extra point attempt. It is up. It is good. And San Antonio, with 11 minutes and 23 seconds left, have opened up a 10 to nothing lead on the Michigan Panthers on the 22-yard touchdown pass from Neuheisel to Jerry Gordon. We'll be right back. We are back at Alamo Stadium in San Antonio, Texas, with San Antonio Gunslingers leading the Michigan Panthers 10-0. Once again, we apologize 
for our technical problems on this end in San Antonio, and we were not allowed or not actually allowed by technical problems to get you the first half of this football game between these two USFL teams. Nick Mickemeyer now to kick off, and ball will go deep. Headed for Bobby Futrell. Futrell, good return up over the 30 to the 34 yard line. Brought down by Reggie Oliver. So the Panthers will take over. First and 10, and Bobby Hebert returns to the quarterbacking duties of the Michigan Panthers. You didn't see it in the first half because we were trying to get the uplink to our satellite, but Bobby Hebert went down after he scrambled and injured his right knee. It was the knee that was injured before the Los Angeles game. He did not return for the rest of the first half. It was only about a minute and a half of play. But now Bear is back in at quarterback. And there's another injury, Jim. Uh, Tyrone McGriff went out of the game uh, with an injury, injury to his right Achilles tendon. And uh, Max Gill, number 67, replaces him in the offensive line. Some more troubles for the Michigan Panthers. They give up the middle to Ken Lacey. Ken Lacey may get three or four yards over the 35 to about the 37. But Choate, big middle linebacker in there for the San Antonio Gunslingers. Let's set the San Antonio defense now for you. Up front, Mike St. Clair, Paul Hanna, Tommy Tabor, and Ken Gillen. The linebackers in their three good ones. John Fairfield, Putt Choate, and Rick D'Amico. The cornerbacks, Peter Rayford and Charles Umstead. The safeties, Mike Ulmer and Ray Waddy. The give to Lacey. He's got room around the right side. A flag is down. Lacey is out for the first down yardage. Let's wait for the call. It's thrown in the middle of that offensive line. It could be holding. Got a lot of inexperienced linemen in the offensive line today. Uh, with the injury now to McGriff, McGill, or Max Gill doesn't have a lot of experience. Uh, he's a 6'3", 255-pound lineman out of North Illinois. And also, uh, Chris Godfrey is not in the lineup. He's being replaced by Ken Dallifor. So uh, you tend to make a lot of mistakes when you're, you're in, an inexperienced lineman. The, in, uh, the penalty was illegal procedure, illegal motion. Pushes the ball back five yards as you take a look at the offensive line up front. The young, inexperienced, and really patchwork quilt offensive line to the Panthers. 10 minutes left, second down and 12. A bear to throw. Here comes the rush over the middle intended for Lacey, and Lacey never even looked for it. Armstead was coming, and Putt Choate had the coverage on Lacey, and he never even looked for the football. That brings up a third and long. Big third down in uh, 12. I tell you, their inability to, uh, to move the football, they can't move it running, nor can they do it throwing, and that's why the Panthers have had such poor field position and uh, they, the only thing they can do is kick the ball. Tommy Tabor is the injured San Antonio gunslinger. He has been replaced in the game by Terry Monroe, number 85. Hebert back to throw. He's got time. Looks deep and overthrows Mike Cobb. Larry James was covering Mike Cobb. Cobb had enough yardage for the first down, but Bobby Aber, you can see that right knee is a little bit ginger right now. He's just not walking on it right. He overthrew Cobb. That forces a fourth down. And we take a look at a new punter for the Michigan Panthers. That is Skip Johnson. There is the received man, Mike Ulmer, who in the first half dropped a kick that Ray Bentley recovered. There is a very stiff breeze blowing out of the south. It is at the back of Johnson. So if he gets it up into that breeze, he should have a very good boot. San Antonio, in the meantime, has put a good rush on Johnson throughout the first half. Not a bad idea for them to try to block this one. High kick. Ulmer takes it at the 15, drops it, but gets it back. Forced out of bounds by Kyle Borland, and we've got flags everywhere. Watch this kick here by Johnson, and watch the referee. I thought for sure he was going to pull his flag out, because if this is not running into the kicker, I don't know what is. Rayford, number 20, 
ran into the kicker. I thought he should have gotten the flag. He didn't, and I believe there's going to be a penalty against San Antonio for illegal block downfield. It is a clip against San Antonio, and that will move the ball back into a hole for Rick Neuheisel and crew. The Gunslingers lead this one 10 to nothing. We've got nine minutes and 48 seconds left to play. The walk-off takes San Antonio to their 11-yard line. A personal foul, number 52 on the receiving team, clipping, first down. Reggie Oliver was the man who was caught clipping as even in San Antonio, there are Michigan Panther fans and he's probably not happy with the performance of his club so far in this game. The give over the left side. Goes to number 40. George Works, I believe. Mark Rush, rather. Mark Rush was the ball carrier, and Rush gets it out to the 14-yard line. Gain of three. Second down and seven. As you take a look at the brain trust of the gunslingers, Gil Meinke, Steinke, rather, is the head coach of the gunslingers. He has taken over the offensive coordinating duties for this club, along with his head coaching job, and has gotten this team scoring uh, more than a touchdown more per game than they were. New Heisel under pressure, gonna run. Parker brings him down. A loss of one on the play. Banizak came in to help out. Corker with his second sack of this game. That gets him to eight on the season. A lot of pressure from the uh, defensive line. You'll see Banasak getting good pressure and the double teaming of David Tipton, the 65 there, has allowed uh, some of the other linemen uh, to, to draw one-on-one -on -one coverage. And uh, a guy like John Banasak loves to only have one guy blocking against him. He forced New Heisel out of the pocket and uh, Corker came up with the tackle. Third down and seven. San Diego from the shotgun. San Antonio, rather, from the shotgun. Works. And Rush are the running backs. The pass to Works, complete for the first down, and more. Up to the 30-yard line. Oliver Davis, the cornerback, brings George Works down, but not until he got it out to the 30-yard line and a first down. Works beats the linebacker. I think it's uh, Pennywell, number 59, on the sideline. No, it was 50, Ray Bentley. He got out in the flat and uh, does a good job of uh, breaking the first tackle. And that's what uh, helped the San Antonio uh, gunslingers pick up a first down as you look at the moon. First and 10, San Antonio, wide right, wide right, Jerry Gordon, wide left is Glenn Stark. Works and rush the running backs to give to rush around the left side. He may get a cover. Larry Bethea in on the stop. Take a look here at the ISO. Daryl Crane is going to attempt a block downfield. You tell me what you think. <laughs> That's what you call saving the body, Jim. <laughs> When you're not in the pass pattern, sometimes the wide receivers figure, well, I'll just get in front of this guy. I don't want to get hurt. Second down and seven, a gain of three by Rush. Oh, right, Heisel over the middle, intercepted by Bentley. Ray Bentley picks it off at the 45-yard line. The first bad pass thrown by Rick Heisel of this game. Bentley, we talked about him before being beaten to flat, but Ray is the type of guy, he's a winner. He'll stay out there and make big plays time and again and again. He did a good job of coming underneath. You saw the pass was intended for 82, uh, Daryl Crane, and he was covered very well by Vito uh, McKeever, number 36, and uh, I thought Bentley did a good job of getting underneath and making the interception. The Gunslingers lead 10-0 with 6.42 left to go, but the Panthers have it in good field position. Stay with us. We'll be back with Bobby Hebert in the offense in just a minute. The Panthers will take over first and 10 from the San Antonio 42-yard line. 
couple in the stands enjoying this game and we would apologize once again for the distortion in our audio and video we are not tuned in perfectly to the satellite but at least we are tuned in so you're getting some action from San Antonio and Whit Taylor is the quarterback he goes downfield to Anthony Allen and hits him for a first down inside the 30 to the 25 yard line Whit Taylor in for Bobby Hebert. Apparently that knee is not right, and Taylor makes the play. Witt does a good job of reading this, uh, the coverage. You can see single coverage being drawn there by Charlie Armstead, number 44, the defensive back. There was a blitz from the inside, and Witt went to the post pattern. That's the biggest offensive play so far for the Panthers. Witt Taylor coming on in relief of Bobby Hebert. Hebert had one series. It wasn't good enough, so Jim Stanley will go with Witt Taylor. Play action. Taylor to throw. He's got wide open. Allen in the corner of the end zone, and he overthrows him. Anthony Allen was wide open, and Taylor overthrew him, or the Panthers would have had six. Real simple mistake here, Jim, and that is when you have an open receiver as open as Anthony Allen is, you don't want to force it and throw the ball on a, on a rope. Watch here. Witt just tries to drill it, and his, and his receiver's wide open. He can't make the adjustment to uh, see he's wide open there's nobody there if he just kind of lost it out there he can make the adjustment as you look at Bobby A. Bear on the sideline the funny thing about that is that I I was given a note Jimmy as we started the second half that A. Bear could return but wouldn't be back in the lineup unless he was needed now you tell me was he needed or not there's the screen and it is incomplete Taylor had John Fairfield right in his face and he was unable to get the screen to Ken Lacey a lot of pressure by the big man, John Bearfield, 58. We talked about him at the top of the show. He had an outstanding game against the, Pan the, the Panthers last time, some 16 tackles. As you see uh, uh, Bear Bearfield come in, he's a lot like John Corker is for the Michigan Panthers. Third down and 10. Wide left is Holloway, wide right is Allen. The running backs are John Williams and Ken Lacey. Taylor under pressure. He's got room up the middle. And he slides into second base safely. But Whit Taylor showing good speed and mobility, something Whit the Panthers Taylor. don't have when Bobby Hebert is in there. And he gets the big scramble for the first down. Tremendous play here by Whit Taylor. And you could not deny him that first down. He knew what he had to do. He felt the pressure from the outside. And Whit has always been a, 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 a dynamic runner, uh, one, one that's not afraid. Uh, to take the ball, pull it down, and pick up first down. Good Taylor point. is 5'11", 185 in his second season from Vanderbilt. He has seen limited action, obviously, because of Bobby Hebert's success. But here under the gun, he's getting the call. Gives the ball to Terry Miller. Terry Miller is stopped after a gain of about one yard. Once again, Putt Choate in the middle along with Rich D'Amico. Paul Hanna getting up off the bottom of that pile. Hanna is out of Purdue, 6'4", 251-pound rookie. And one of the strengths of San Diego all season long has been their defense. We've got four and a half minutes left to play. San Antonio, excuse me. I'm West. I'm, I'm West. It's okay, Joe. <laughs> hey, we're on the air. That's kind of amazing the way things have gone tonight. Taylor to throw. Into the end zone, incomplete. Pete Rayford knocked it away from Anthony Allen. You see what Taylor just dropped straight back, looks for one man, Anthony Allen. I thought the play was broken up by an excellent play by Peter Rayford, number 20. You'll be able to see it here. But he did have double coverage on him. 16,884 on hand here at Alamo Stadium in San Antonio. Third and goal from the five Panthers. Taylor is set. But choke, middle linebacker. Big rush on a stunt. Paul Hanna helping out. 
but cut out the middle linebacker, got to it, Taylor, and the Panthers will be forced to a fourth down. Watch Paul Hanna, number 65, come in from the outside and make the sack. 6'4", 250 pounds, out of Purdue. Paul Hanna made the big play for the San Antonio Gunslingers. Novo Bojovic on from the 18-yard line. It'll be a 28-yard attempt. He missed one earlier. This one is good. So the Panthers get on the board with three points from Novo Bojovic. They are within a touchdown with three minutes, 52 seconds left to play in the third quarter. It's San Antonio 10, Michigan 3. Missed one earlier in the game, but he makes no mistake on this one as he drills it through the uprights to get Michigan on the scoreboard for the first time in this football game with three minutes and 52 seconds left to play in the third quarter. It brings Michigan back to within a touchdown at 10-3. Here come the Panthers now to kick off. They fake the onside. Boyovich goes deep. Marcus Bonner, two yards deep in the end zone. He's over the 20 and is knocked down hard at the 23-yard line. Mike Edwards, number 53, along with Carlton Rose, knocked Bonner down. And the gunslingers now will start first and 10. The referees will stop the ball at the 24-yard line of the gunslingers. And we have an injury as Mike Edwards, the man who brought Bonner down with that big hit, had a little trouble getting up. But he's now all right, making it off the field. Rick Neuheisel remains the quarterback of the San Antonio Gunslingers. Earlier in the first half, Alvin White, his backup, came into the game for just one series of downs. Neuheisel was not hurt. Head coach Bill Stanky just decided to go with Alvin White for one series. White proved not to be effective, so New Heisel came back in. Well, really, they, they brought Alvin White in. Uh, it was uh, four or five minutes left before the half, and I think they felt that White could move the team just passing the football down the field, but as you indicated, it was unsuccessful. This presentation is brought to you by the USFL and the Michigan Panthers. Any unauthorized rebroadcast or reproduction in whole or in part without the prior express written consent of the USFL and the Michigan Panthers is strictly prohibited. Dennis, we talked before the game uh, about the playoff situation and the Panthers' possibility of making the playoffs. The Central Division and Pacific Division winners will go. At this point, Houston leads the Central Division, and the Pacific Division is led by Denver at 8-6. The rest of these teams, two of those six, will go as wild card clubs. You see Michigan and L.A. 7-7, seven and seven, Oklahoma, Arizona 6-8, and eight, and Oakland and San Antonio at 5-9. and nine. So, it, you know, really, I think the Panthers realistically could make the playoffs winning two out of the four of the last games. Certainly, by winning three, they'll make it. But I think they have to win four in order to regain momentum, have a real shot at defending their USFL championship. Right now, they are in danger as they trail 10-3 to the Gunslingers with three minutes left in the third quarter. It is second down and nine, and Hagen got a yard on that first down carry. New Heisel to throw the rush from Borland. Sack. Kyle Borland and John Corker. Kyle Borland and Alan Hughes, the two people in on the sack. Okay, you, you, you saw the tail end of the mistake there. Borland was untouched because the receiver came out of the backfield. And when you're back, watch the back out of the left corner. He'll come out into the flat. Well, his responsibility is if the linebacker's coming, you do not go out in the flat. And he made the mistake. The uh, linebacker came straight in and made the sack. 52, Kyle Borland, as you look. A couple of keys. <laughs> Temperatures in the mid 70s here tonight in San Antonio. Beautiful night for football. New Heisel loses six in the last play. Now he goes to the air. Intended for Gordon, covered by Oliver Davis. Pass will go incomplete, and the Panthers will get the ball back. As putter Ken Hartley of the Gunslingers will have to kick into a stiff 15 to 20 mile an hour breeze coming out of the southeast. 
Single deep safety for Michigan Walter Broughton. is Walter Broughton. Hartley to kick, averaging 36.8 per kick this year. The Panthers with a 10-man rush. Right, not a great kick. Takes a Panther bounce. And it will be marked out of bounds and in play for the Panthers at the San Antonio 43-yard line. Great field position for the Panthers to try and come back. We'll be back. 2.18 left, third quarter. Panthers trailing by a score. Monday night at 8, they fought for the only thing they really loved, Liberty. The star of the Thornburg, Brian Brown, stars in the world premiere of Eureka Stockade. Monday at 8, right here on TV 50. First and 10, Michigan. Whit Taylor remains quarterback. Back to throw. Down the middle, incomplete. Interference call on Peter Rafer. Interference on Rafer. Pass intended for Anthony Allen. And I'll tell you, Whit Taylor surprised me there. He stuck that ball between three people, and it is interference on Allen. That will be a 10-yard penalty and a first down for Michigan. The guilty party here is number 20, Rafer. And you'll let's see if he comes in too soon. Yes, he was over the back of uh, Anthony Allen. But you're so correct, uh, uh, Jim. He put that ball right in between uh, uh, D'Amico, 51, the linebacker, and the strong safety, uh, Omer. I I'm really impressed with, uh, Rick, with Taylor so far. He's looked very sharp. Yeah, and impressive is Anthony Allen also. Allen getting the start tonight in front of Walter Broughton because of his performance last week against Philadelphia. Panthers first and 10. Ball on the 28-yard line of the San Antonio Gunslingers. A little more than two minutes left, third quarter. Taylor incomplete, intended for Holloway. pass, uh, Jim, that you work on and practice a lot, and I'm sure in defense of Whit Taylor, he's not had an opportunity to work that much on a timing play uh, with the uh, number one receiver, because usually they will do that while Whit Taylor may be in practice handing the ball off to the backs, uh, working on running plays. So uh, that's a tough play to complete because you're throwing to a spot hoping and thinking that he's going to be in one place, and obviously on that play he's in another place up a second down and 10. Taylor back again. Forced out of the pocket. Throws complete to Allen inside the 15. Anthony Allen has become the main man for Whit Taylor and he gets it inside the 15 for another first down for Michigan. Pretty good blocking this time I thought Jim uh, in the interior line as you look at uh, Radloff and Wiska uh, contain their people inside but the key is Whit Taylor on the moving pocket, he moves out to his right, and he's as good a thrower on the move as he is when he's standing still. You'll see him let go with, with the pass here as Anthony Allen comes up with a big first down catch. Injured player for San Antonio. He is down on the field. We will identify him when we come back. Right now, let's take a break. The Panthers moving close, but they still trail 10-3 to San Antonio. The San Antonio injury was to Greg Fields. He came off the field under his own power, replaced in the lineup by Ken Gillen. The Panthers, first and 10 from the 19-yard line of the Gunslinger. They give up the middle. Ken Lacey, he fumbles! San Antonio indicates that they have it. The referees are the real ones that count, though. Now, Ray Penny suggests that it's still the Panthers football. Well, the funny thing was that after Lacey fumbled it, it was just kind of sitting down there on the bottom of the pile. And I thought San Antonio guy came in and got it personally. The guy laying right there, I can't see his other number. It's a five, something five, maybe 65, Paul Hanna. 
The referees have not yet indicated who has the football. Let's wait till they indicate who has the football. San Antonio's offense is half on the field. And half of the defense of the Michigan Panthers is on the field. And right in the middle of it all are the referees. It is Michigan Panthers football. The Michigan Panthers retain possession on the Ken Lacey fumble. And at this point, let us identify the referee. Don Wilson is your referee. The umpire, Marvin Duran. Duran Berger. The head linesman is Roger McMinn. The line judge, David Hedema. Back judge, Bill Began. Side judge, Willie Spencer. Field judge, Bob Mantu. There you see the ball on the right side of your pitcher. Now watch, it's just gonna lay there. See the ball? It's gonna lay there and watch a guy come in from San Antonio right here. Watch the ball, it's still there. Now watch the, watch a guy come in right there. See him coming in there? That's the guy that recovered the ball, I thought, from San Antonio. I don't know who it is. Panthers have the ball, second and seven. The give to Albert Bentley. Bentley using good leg drive, gets it over the 10. Down to about the eight yard line. Off the bottom of the pile comes San Antonio's John Bearfield. Bentley is the rookie that the Panthers picked up in April in the trade that sent John Arnaud to the Chicago Blitz. The Panthers then got the draft rights to Bentley and signed him. And he has been a big find as he has done very well in this ball game and has earned a shot at playing. Third down five. Here's the blitz. Over the middle, Mike Cobb, complete. He'll have the first down. Mike Cobb continues his string. He has caught a pass in every game the Michigan Panthers have played. This one is a big catch. It gets them inside the five yard line. Larry James on the coverage, but Mike Cobb came up with the ball. But the guy that made the play was Whit Taylor. He had plenty of pressure coming from 58 John Bearfield. He stayed in the pocket, got off a good, quick, clean pass. Uh, to Mike Cobb, the tight end. Watch here as Bearfield comes right at with Taylor. He steps up into the pocket, giving himself enough time to throw. Throws the ball to Mike Cobb for the first down. James and Waddy, the two men covering. The measurement for the first down indicates the Panthers have it. So it'll be first and goal from the three-yard line. And the Panthers, with just four seconds remaining in the third quarter, will get one shot to try to get it into the end zone, at least in this quarter. They will not get a shot. The referee starts the clock, and that is the end of quarter number three. But the Panthers are knocking on the door. They still trail 10-3. Right up momentarily. Stay with us. You want to know why the San Antonio team is called the Gunslingers? Well, there's a couple of reasons. They get them all dressed up down here in San Antonio, and the 16,000 on hand are delighted at what's happening right now, although the Panthers could dampen their party. First and goal from the three. They give to Lacey up the middle. He gets to about the two-yard line. They have got a half yard. Rich D'Amico in on the stop. The hand straight up the middle to Lacey. Not a whole lot of running room, but you could see Rich D'Amico, uh, number 51, making the tackle as you look at Coach Jim Stanley on the sideline. Stanley has had to work with a patchwork quilt offense and defense with the injuries that he's had to overcome in this season. Second down and goal from the three. No gain on the last play. Roll out by Taylor. Looks in the end zone. Mike Cobb, touchdown! Touchdown, Michigan, is Mike Cobb. Makes the catch, takes a heavy hit, and he's hurt. And we've got extracurricular activity in the end zone. Jim Dallafor in there. John Bearfield from San Antonio. 
Albert Bentley is in. There goes the flag. Cobb is hurt. Jim, I can only say that with the few offensive linemen that they have here with the Panthers, I certainly hope that there's no, no one ejected from this football game. Dallaport seemed to be involved in the confrontation, and uh, should they kick him out, they will only have Tony Osmond to go in to play the offensive line. Right now, the concern is with Mike Cobb, who is in the end zone. It will be a dead ball foul, so the touchdown will count, and the Panthers will get the extra point from the two-yard line. You'll see Whit Taylor on a play-action pass, and what he does here, he does a good job of staying on the run. This puts additional pressure on the defensive backs. Then he lofts the ball up high for the big tight end, Mike Cobb, out of Michigan State. And you can see right there, he lands on his left shoulder, I think. See, it looks like he's trying to grab his left shoulder. And I think, uh, just guessing, that that would be the injury. Mike Cobb is coming off the field now, and it is his left arm. It is probably the left shoulder. He took a big hit from number 55, Puck Choate, after he caught the football. Can't say enough about the job Whit Taylor's done here. You'll see the play-action fake keeps the linebackers up tight, and as Cobb goes down right there on his left shoulder, I think that's where the injury took place. Don Eccles is the backup tight end. He's a good one. Cobb, meanwhile, catches the touchdown pass, his fourth of the season. Novo Boyovic on now to try the extra point to tie this football game up. Another injury. That's uh, the second major injury uh, of this game. Uh, we've talked about Tyrone McGriff being injured with the Achilles tendon. Now Mike Cobb with his left, I think his left shoulder. And not to mention Bobby Aker. Boyovic is perfect, and we've got a tie football game. It's a brand new game, 10 to 10, 14.09 left to play. We'll be back to sort out the penalties, but first, let's take this time out. The Michigan Panthers have tied this football game up with 10 points in the second half, and it is all tied up. 10-10, Novo Boyovic ready to kick off. Deep for San Antonio, it will come down to Mike Omer at the 15. Omer gets it to the 20, and that's as far as he goes. And Dennis, somewhat surprising that there was no penalty assessed on the kickoff following the melee in the end zone after Cobb caught the touchdown pass. Apparently, the referees figured boys will be boys. Let it go at that. Now it's San Antonio. First and 10, Neuheisel comes in. 9 of 15 on the night for 130 yards. Wide left is Starks. Wide right is Bugs. Neuheisel straight back. Throws to Bugs. Bugs breaks the tackle. He's out over the 35 and has the first down. Good running by Danny Bugs. Jay Hayes over there to make the stop for the Panthers. The key to this play, Jim, is Neuheisel doing a good job of getting the ball out to Bugs in a hurry, allowing Danny the chance to make a move on the defensive back. You saw him cut inside and then go back out to the sideline. He possesses excellent speed. Uh, he was drafted, uh, he's been in the pros, I believe, nine years now. And uh, he was drafted by the New York Giants, played a few years with the Washington Redskins. Last year, he was with Tampa Bay. And uh, he came over to San Antonio this year. That time, they give the ball to Hagan. He's knocked down by Borland. Borland from the outside linebacker position gets a shot at Hagen. Hagen, of course, a former Michigan Panther. He came to San Antonio in the expansion draft as the Panthers left Hagen unprotected. A gain of one, second and nine. Mike's really found a home down here, Jim. Uh, with the Panthers uh, last year, he really didn't do much more than just play on the special teams. But down here, he's been given a chance to, to run from the... Uh, 
as a starter, and he's done very well. Here comes the old Statue of Liberty, Marcus Bonner over the 40. He won't have enough for the first down. Oliver Davis, number 21, stayed home, made the stop, but once again, we saw this in the first half. John Corker gets caught up inside. That is exactly the old Statue of Liberty. As the quarterback stands deep and just kind of hands the ball back behind him, uh, but the key to that play is great blocking up front by the offensive line, not allowing any penetration by the Michigan Panthers. A gain of six on the play. It will be now third down and three. Starks and Bugs with the wide out. Lou Heisel straight back. He's getting pressure, and he will not get the first down. It is Pennywell, I believe, coming back, stopping Neuheisel. Corker was chasing. Corker is down and hurt, but Neuheisel didn't get it, Dennis. He, made a, he, he does a good job of running out of uh, real pressure, and he really takes a hit from 59, Robert Pennywell. You could tell, watch here, as uh, Pennywell really pops him as he's down. And Neuheisel remains down and injured. That is a big blow to the gunslingers. So while they work on Neuheisel, let's take this pause. And you can watch these messages. 11.46 left to play in the football game. We're tied. Ten apiece. Back to punt. On fourth and one is Ken Hartley of the Gunslingers. He has the wind at his back. High kick does not turn over. Walter Broughton lets it bounce and gets a big bounce for the Panthers into the end zone for a touchback. Rick Neuheisel, we might mention, who was injured before we left for the commercial break, came off the field under his own power. It appears as though he can return to the football game. Meantime, we are looking for John Corker on the sidelines. And he is over there and being worked on. But I expect Corker will probably come back into the game. All the gunslingers on the sideline are warming up back quarterback Alvin White. He got in for three plays in the first half. And maybe New Heisel is more seriously injured than we thought. He's with the offensive coaches, though, and appears to be all right. Whit Taylor has the Michigan Panthers now out over the football, first and 10 from the 20. Straight drop, goes outside. And complete to Anthony Allen for the first down. Excellent recover by Anthony Allen in keeping his feet inbound. We take a look at Neuheisel on the sideline. Covering on the play, Pete Rayford. Rayford leads the team with four interceptions. On that play, Anthony Allen did a good job getting outside on the down and out cut. Got 11 yards for the first down. John Corker on the sidelines for Michigan. Appears to be all right. We'll see when the defense comes back. Right now it's the offense to work. Going deep. Derek Holloway does not make the catch, but interference on Rayford. Whit Taylor went deep to Derek Holloway. The wind was very, very strong. The ball hung up. Holloway had to come back to it, but no question about interference, Dennis. No question at all. Holloway had a touchdown. Uh, Jimmy, if they would have been going with the wind, he certainly had his man, uh, a Relford, uh, beat clearly. And Relford did the smart thing by interfering, coming back. Uh, otherwise, it would have been six. Whit Taylor's been real, very impressive. Very impressive. In the United States Football League, the point of infraction on an interference call is not where they put the ball down. It is a 15-yard penalty and a first down. A pass interference, number 20 on the defense. That's an automatic first down. Head coach Gil Steinke of the San Antonio Gunslingers. First down and as the Panthers move the ball offensively behind Whit Taylor. And we are happy to report that Mike Cobb, injured on his touchdown recovery or touchdown pass reception, is back in the game at tight end. 
The give is to Albert Bentley. Tries around the left side. A flag down. Bentley gets maybe two. Looks like a holding call against the Panthers and possibly on Mike Cobb. It was Rich D'Amico over there making the stop on Bentley. Penalty flag. He got help from Rock Richard. Let's listen to the referee's call. Don Wilson is our referee tonight. It is a big one, 10 yards. Holding number 33 on the offense. First down. Sorry, Mike Cobb, it was on Cleo Miller, number 33. So it'll be first down and 20 Panthers. We've got 11 minutes, five seconds left to play in this game. Witt Taylor splits Derek Holloway left. Sends Anthony Allen to the right. Cleo Miller and Albert Bentley are the running backs. Taylor, incomplete. Holloway did not have control of the ball. The referee indicating that. So Holloway does not get the reception, and the down box will go over. Once again, you're going to see Whit Taylor really put something on the football on the 15-yard outplay, and uh, Holloway coming back is juggling it as he goes out of bounds. I thought it was a good call by the referee. Coverage was over there by Rock Richmond, number 25 from San Antonio. What a great name for a football player, Rock Richmond. Rock's a good name for any athlete. <laughs> Rock, Rocky. Second down, 20. Straight back by Taylor. He throws out in Coverage once again by Richmond. Rock. Albert <laughs> Bentley, the intended receiver. Bentley, the intended receiver, not Cleo Miller, but Richmond was there to make sure he didn't get it. Well, Whit Taylor didn't have a chance to throw downfield, so he came off the, the deep receiver and... Uh, Elected to go short to Bentley. Good coverage, as we already mentioned, by uh, Richmond. Incomplete pass. The Panthers are working this fourth quarter into a stiff freeze. The uh, gunslingers, when they go on offense, will have the win with them. It is third down and 20. Big play time for Mitchell. Taylor scrambles, throws down the middle. Derek Holloway drops it. Derek Holloway had first down yardage. The ball was delivered in a crowd, and Holloway couldn't hold on. The ball will go over on down as Michigan will be forced to punt. I thought Taylor did another excellent job moving around in the pocket, taking the pressure off of himself. He throws a bullet to Derek Holloway, who was hearing footsteps coming uh, from a lot of pressure from a lot of people. Punt show, number 55, was back there, as well as Rock Richmond. And uh, it really was just a drop pass by Derek Holloway. A very catchable football as we see Skip Johnson back to punt for the Panthers. He's done a good job this game. San Antonio put a lot of pressure on him. Deep for San Antonio, Mike Almer. Almost blocked, end over end. Bouncing at the 35 and downed by Bentley at the 35-yard line. As once again, Skip Johnson barely gets it off, but gets it down far enough so that San Antonio doesn't have great field position. We'll be back. We're tied at 10. 10.38 left to play. Michigan against San Antonio. We're back in San Antonio, and let's take five seconds right now for station identification. This is WKBD TV 50 Detroit. First and 10 San Antonio. The give to Mike Hagan up the middle and Hagan got big yards. Over the 45 to the 48. Brought down by Pennywell and Moriarty and Bethea. Moriarty and Bethea bring Hagan down after he gets the first down. Good block inside, number 60, the center right there. Bill Winters creates the hole. Hagen cuts right off of his block, does a good job of continuing to run after he's hit by 45, Tom Moriarty. 
Mike Hagan a chance to uh, play well against his old teammates. First and 10 ball on the 49 yard line of the San Antonio Gunslingers. Neuheisel straight back, throws to the sideline. He's got it complete to Bugs. The Bugs only gets about two yards. There's the flag. It will probably be unnecessary rush. Pennywell, McKeever, and Bentley were all out there. We'll listen to the referee, Dan Wilson, with the official call after he steps off the penalty. But again, it is a big one, and the Panthers continue to self-destruct. A personal foul, a late hit, number 52 on the defense. It's first down. Kyle Borland with the late hit. The 15-yard penalty takes the ball down to the 33-yard line of the Michigan Panthers. And now the Gunslingers are on the mark. 9.35 left to play in the football game. They give to Hagan. Hagan tries to look at it. We've got a flag off the ball. Larry Bethea in on the stop. John Corker helping Bethea out. There was a flag thrown in the neighborhood of Oliver Davis and wide receiver Daryl Crane. But they are not marking off any penalties. Well, it apparently the, uh, the referee or somebody just pulled a flag and decided that there was nothing wrong on the play. So he did the right thing by eating a flag. Second down and eight. Here comes the fake reverse to Bonner. And Bonner gets over the 30 to the 28. Marcus Bonner running the ball. John Banizak and Kyle Borland over on the stop. Robert Pennywell also getting up from the bottom of that pile. They have run that reverse extremely well. This time they faked it. And a good call too, Jim. For that reason, they've had so much success uh, running the reverses and Bonner does a good job of keeping that ball inside. He picked up pretty good yardage, four or five yards. Third down and five. Big play for San Antonio offensively for the Panthers defensively. New Heisel straight back. Here comes the blitz. Pass to Hagan. He's got the first down. But there is two flags. There are two flags on the field. The tackle was made on Hagen by Tom Moriarty, but there are two flags down. You're gonna see, I believe the first penalty was roughing the quarterback or something, but Mike Hagen does an excellent job of breaking the tackle of Mike Edwards on the sideline and then running right through Tom Moriarty. Here's Neuheisel getting rid of the ball. I think they might've called a late hit, but it didn't look or appear to be that way. And Hagen the, once again with determination picks up the first down for the San Antonio Gunners. And the second flag was on Edwards for face mask. When they get this straight around, Don Wilson will tell us one thing's for sure. The gunslingers will have a first down and inside the 20 yard line of the Panthers. Now they'll be inside the 10 to the 9-yard line of the Panthers. Roughing the passer, number 58 on the defense. That's an automatic first down. That's a real tough call, Jim. I, 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 I'm sorry, but I just can't agree with that. Uh, a linebacker coming in, rushing a quarterback, and what you're supposed to do, stop in midair? Didn't appear to me that there was a... Uh, a roughing the passer in that particular situation. The guilty party was Will Coakley. First and goal from the nine yard line. Nowhere. John Banizak. Mike Hagan had nowhere to go as John Banizak comes up with another big play from his defensive tackle spot. Good penetration by Banizak. Banasak had a great game last week. Uh, he had some five individual tackles, 
four assists and one sack, and here again he comes up in a key situation. Good penetration makes the tackle a sure tackle, two-handed tackle against Mike Higgins. Somebody dead flat missed the block. Is right. What happened in the offensive line there. 741 left to play. We're tied at 10. Second and goal from the 12. New Heisel back. Pressure. And he throws it at the feet of an offensive lineman. There will be no intentional grounding. New Heisel did a good job just to get that off. Mike Hagan was in the area for the reception, so no flag was thrown. But Neuheisel was under heavy pressure. Yes, Jim, he had the presence of mind to get rid of this ball here. I thought he did a good job by just getting rid of it and not taking the loss. See, he sees Hagen right there. He tried to dump it to uh, 34 right there. Mike Hagen. Kyle Borland was the man putting the pressure on. Number 52 from his outside linebacker spot. Fake play action rollout. Neuheisel's got room. New Heisel does not get in. He does not get in. A scramble down inside the one yard line. It will be fourth down and about a foot, depending upon where they mark it. Once again, Rich New Heisel does the right thing. Watch 61, Rich Garza. He's out in front of him. Nobody, everybody's covered. New Heisel does the right thing, pulls the ball down, picks up great yardage, almost scores. Ron Osborne coming over, making the hit. Borland helping out, keeping New Heisel out of the end zone. But they are within inches of scoring a touchdown. The clock is running. 6.41 left to play in the game. Now a discussion going on. And there is a timeout called by San Antonio. They took the game clock down to 632 and took the play clock down to one second and then called timeout. We'll be back with their fourth and one decision in a 10-10 ball game after we pause for these messages. Before we get to the fourth down play, Monday at 11, the hottest music comes your way with a premiere of Solid Gold Hits. Break the bad news habit. And check out Solid Gold Hits, Monday at 11 p.m. on TV 50. Some people, Jim, might question this decision. I think it's a good one. San Antonio has the momentum. I don't think it's that difficult for them to pick up a half a foot uh, on this fourth down play. But if it doesn't work, certainly a lot of people are going to say they should have kicked the field goal. Touchdown. George Wirtz. George Wirtz from his fullback position goes over the top, scores on the fourth and one gamble of Gil Steinke, and now San Antonio takes a 16 to 10 lead with 628 left to play. I thought it was a good effort by Hagen, first of all, by jumping up over the line, making the illusion that he had the football, and uh, Wirtz, number 40, came behind him because a lot of times, the first time you see a guy jump up, that's the guy you want to tackle. Hagen jumps up over, a linebacker or two went after him, and then Wirtz comes in behind and uh, gets over for the touchdown. I'll tell you what, Dennis. As we missed the extra point, it was good. Ray Bentley put on one great effort, going over the top himself, and almost forced Works to the side, not allowing him to get in. But he broke the plane, and that is all that matters. As San Antonio takes a 17 to 10 lead over the Michigan Panthers, we've got 6.28 left to play. Stick around, it's not over yet. Nick Mickemeyer tacked on the 17th point for the San Antonio Gunslingers of this ball game will kick off the two deep receivers for Michigan, Albert Bentley and Bobby Petra. Mickemeyer gets a big foot into it. It goes out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. 
First and 10, Michigan from the 20. Mickmeyer had, of course, the wind at his back. And it is a stiff breeze coming out of the southeast at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. And the Panthers now will take over first to 10, and they will have to work into that win with Whit Taylor at quarterback, subbing for the injured Bobby Abair. Abair hurt his knee in the first half, came back for one series in the second half, and then Jim Stanley went with Whit Taylor. He has guided the Panthers to 10 points in the second half. They were shut out in the first half. He's got Anthony Allen split wide to the right and Holloway wide left. Lacey and Bentley on the running. Play action rollout. Taylor throws complete to Allen at the 35 yard line in front of Pete Rayford. Pass complete to Anthony Allen. Brought down by Pete Rayford. Anthony Allen came from Los Angeles in First an April trade. And the Panthers, with uh, Anthony Carter out, really needed Memphis. this guy. And in 14. the last couple of weeks, he has really 10. come on. That's true, Jim. He had a big game last week against Philadelphia, catching five balls for 74 yards. And uh, again, today, he's made some key catches. And that's all they've really needed and wanted from the wide receivers is somebody to hang on to the football. Play action rollout again. Throw back to the tight end, Cobb. He's got room over the 40 to the 44-yard line. Jim Bob Morris brings him down. Nicely set up here by Whit Taylor. It looked like he was going to roll to his right. Turns around late to throw to Cobb. I thought Cobb should have made a cut to the outside here. He, if he'd have cut to the outside, he'd have gotten himself at least the first down because there was nobody out there. But uh, Bob Morris, uh, number 28, did a good job of uh, stopping Mike Cobb down the middle. Gain of nine on the play. Second and one. The give to Lacey. Lacey stopped short of the first time. 65, Paul Hanna. Hanna, the rookie out of Purdue, makes the big hit on Lacey, and Lacey does not get the first down as he has stopped a yard oh, short. Hannah, It'll be third down and one. Jim, I think the Panthers have got to continue to do things uh, like rolling out. Whit Taylor is putting a lot of pressure on that defense because when he rolls in a situation like this, not only can he throw it, but he certainly has shown that he can run it as well. Look out, San Antonio's gunslingers are loading up. Less than four and a half left to play. They give this time to Cleo Miller. Albert Bentley, Bentley I believe got the first down. Albert Bentley hit, and with second effort, got the first down. The referees mark it over the 45 to the 46. That will be a first down. Looked like D'Amico was in there first to make the stop. 46. So the Panthers continue with another first down. Less than four minutes to play. They trail 17-10. Lenny Patrick into the game for the first time. Along with Perry Miller. They are the running back. Wide left. Allen wide right. Holloway. Taylor calling signal. Over the middle. Complete to Patrick. Inside the 35-yard line to the 34 to of the San Antonio Gunslingers. Ray Waddy on the stop, but the Panthers get a big play. Ray Gotta give a lot of credit up front. Radloff, Wiska, uh, Max Hill all in there giving Whit Taylor plenty of time to throw the football. Patrick comes out of the backfield, splits the zone down the middle. Whit Taylor finds him, and Lenny does a good job of catching the football. Uh, he is a good receiver. He's caught 15 passes coming into this game, so he knows how to catch and hang on to football. 2.57 left, first and 10, Michigan Panthers on the San Antonio 34. Taylor straight back, here comes the blitz. Sack. Hot choke, middle linebacker makes the sack. A loss of nine. That really hurts a little bit, Jim. I mean, you can't expect him to do everything right. But uh, as soon as he felt that pressure, I think he might have waited a second too long because uh, Putt Choke came in to uh, upset uh, Whit Taylor. They have to take the loss. Second and 20. And in this situation, field position is very important. 2.40 left to go now. Panthers looking at second and 20. 
for time, throws over the middle, incomplete intended for Mike Cobb, but there might have been an interference call, but no call as Ray Waddy was in on the coverage. Third down and 20 now. Pass intended for Mike Cobb. Waddy spent time with the Redskins and Cardinals, and I'm sure San Antonio is glad he came here. Witt does another excellent job of leading the receiver. He saw uh, Mike Cobb coming over. Now, you tell me that's not pass interference, my friend. Did he hit him before the ball got there? Yeah, I believe so. That's pass interference. <laughs> <laughs> there you see the story. It's simple. 221 left to play. Panthers trail by seven. Third down and 20. Underneath to Patrick. Patrick gets 10 back, but not nearly enough for the first down. It'll be fourth Patrick down and 10. Patrick Charles Armstead out of Ray Illinois Ray. makes the stop. Whit Taylor once again moving around in the backfield. I didn't think he was going to get this one off. Uh, he's standing back there trying to figure out, well, what am I going to do now? And then uh, goes to his left, stops and finds Lenny Patrick. Unfortunately for the Panthers, it was far short of the first down. And Whit Taylor pays the price as he is drilled by number 99, Greg Fields. We're at the two-minute warning. Let's pause right now. The Panthers trail San Antonio 17-10. Two minutes left to go. Go on the expedition of the century as the crew of the Calypso uncovers the secrets of the hidden Amazon. Don't miss Cousteau Amazon, Thursday at 8 on TV 50. Meanwhile, back at the uh, Rio Grande, <laughs> we got a fourth down and 10 for the Panthers, fourth and 11 from the 39-yard line, 34-yard line of the San Antonio Gunfire. Once again, Jimmy, I think they got to call some kind of rollout and give Whit Taylor a chance to run for the first down as well as throw. Taylor throws complete to Allen for the first down. What a big play. Ray Waddy on the coverage, but Anthony Allen does it again, coming up with a big catch, and you can't give Whit Taylor enough credit for delivering the football. Forget about rolling out, but Whit Taylor dropped straight back and really drilled this one to Anthony Allen, number 87. We've seen in the past a lot of times in a key situation like that, the receiver doesn't come up with the catch, but Anthony Allen concentrates fully, puts both hands on the football, and comes up with the first play, but first down play for the Panthers. Big fourth down conversion. First and 10 now, Michigan. Pass out to Holloway. Holloway holds on. Stays in bounds, though. The clock runs with 1.30 left to play. It'll be a gain of three yards down to the 17-yard line. Ray Rayford on the coverage. This is the second time they've run this pass. And again, it's a spot play where the quarterback comes back, throws the ball to an area, a spot. And I don't think they've worked on that play enough between Whit Taylor and Derek Holloway because they've been off both times. Time is running out. A minute 11 left to go in the game. In regulation, Michigan second down and seven. Here comes the blitz. Taylor over the middle, complete! At the five to Patrick, a flag down, a flag down. Holding against the Panthers. The preliminary call, holding against Michigan. Such a tough call. You know, you can just about call holding anytime you want to, but uh, the blitz was on, and Whit Taylor spots Lenny Patrick deep. Over the middle, would have been a first down. Dennis, the play is called, the penalty rather, called against the San Antonio Gunslingers. Lenny Patrick makes the reception. The Panthers will take the play, not the penalty. The play was defensive holding, and it was declined. A San Antonio player heard the referee say holding. He assumed it was on Michigan. It was not. So now the Panthers, with one minute left to play, are first and goal inside the five. What a finish. Two 
wide receivers split right. Holloway and Allen. The running back, Terry Miller and Lenny Patrick. Good Taylor rolls right. Run. Throws in the end zone. Overthrows Holloway. Is open with Taylor running right, throwing left, overthrew him. I thought he had enough room in front of him, Jim, to run with the ball. Just kind of sitting back there. I thought he could have picked up good yardage, but he did have the touchdown had he not thrown it high. There it is again. Derek Just Ho out of the reach of Derek Holloway is the Panthers called timeout with 55 seconds left to play. Dennis, at this point, with a second down and goal from the five. What is Jim Stanley and his coaching staff offensively thinking about here? Obviously, get it in the end zone, but what kind of play? I got to believe, and I've said it a couple of times already, Jim, that uh, they've got to use Witt's ability to run and throw, uh, or, or, or throw and run on the run, so that if you drop back and they have a blitz, let's say, now you're, you're, you're going against the defense catching you before you throw the pass. If he runs out and there's good coverage, he can continue to run and force the secondary to either come up or he runs for a touchdown. Well, Jim Stanley is still at it on the sideline. His offensive backfield receivers, Coach George Dixon, is with him. They are talking with Whit Taylor. Mike Ray is the third string quarterback who would be probably the backup now. And they have decided what to do as Stanley adjusts the headsets with Taylor coming back into the game. 55 left in regulation. You know, the other thing, Jim, that you can, can think about is that you know San Antonio defensively is going to all out basically blitz. They're going to come after with Taylor. So if you get a sweet play or something like that and it's well blocked, no penetration on the inside, it'll work. Terry Miller, Lenny Patrick are the running backs. Anthony Allen is wide left, wide right is Holloway. In motion is Allen. Straight drop. Throws to Patrick and complete. With Taylor under pressure from Ken Gillen. Threw it in complete to Lenny Patrick. 51 seconds left. Third and goal from the four. I think Witt was looking for somebody, obviously, to his right. He came off very late and tried to hit uh, Lenny Patrick out in the flat, who was open. He got uh, coverage coming over late from uh, Putt Schott, number 55. But uh, it's a tough play. Two wide outs split to the right. Holloway in the slot. To his right is Allen. Running backs Miller and Patrick. In motion is Patrick. Rolling right into the end zone. Touchdown, Anthony Allen. Michigan is within one with 46 seconds left to play. Peter Rayford was beaten on the coverage. And Anthony Allen, who came up with the big catch on fourth and 10 for the first down, comes up with a touchdown catch to bring the Panthers to within one. Allen certainly coming back for the second week in a row with the clutch performances, goes up and gets this one. And I believe, see number 20, how he had, he couldn't commit. Rayford, he saw Whit Taylor coming up, so he just, he didn't know what to do. Come up or go back to try to cover uh, Allen, but uh, he beat number 20, as well as number 47, Raymond Waddy. Here is the extra point to tie it up. Novo Boyova. It's good. Boyovich hits it. And with 46 seconds left, we're tied at 17. Are we headed for overtime? Who knows? <laughs> what a finish. You know, Dennis, we were off the air the entire first half. And to be perfectly honest with our viewers back home, we apologize for that. But you have seen a totally different football game in the second half than what went on in the first half. Whit Taylor has been outstanding, replacing Bobby Hebert. Anthony Allen has come into his own as a big play receiver. The Panther defense has been hurt. Rick Neuheisel has done a good job, but they're playing much better, sounder, basic football in the second half. I had no idea, uh, Jimmy, that uh, Whit Taylor could move the football team 
the way he's displayed here uh, in this second half. And, you know, amongst all the booing and uh, all the negative things being said about Bobby Hebert uh, in the last few games, maybe this is what they needed to uh, get somebody fresh in that uh, offensive lineup uh, to just kind of change things and generate some confidence on offense once again. Well, there are three gunslingers. Looks like they're headed off to the OK Corral or maybe to Reload. Kitty's Lone Star <laughs> Saloon for a shot of red eye. <laughs> if they're leaving the stadium, they're probably the only ones out of the 16,000 because with 46 seconds left, we're tied up at 17 and looking for overtime as Novo Bojovic gets set to tee it up. One thing to remember as we take a look at Marcus Bonner, one of the deep men for the gunslingers, is that the wind will be at the back of San Antonio. Mickemeyer's longest field goal is 48 yards. If they get close enough, they could try one over 50. High kick. Homer has it at the 11. Edwards brings him down at the 20. Novo Boyovich hit a good kick into the wind. The key, hang time. It allowed coverage to get down inside that didn't allow Elmer much running room. Well, he didn't really have to work on the hang time because the wind took care of that once he kicked it. The ball just stood up there. But uh, good coverage in a good situation, in a key situation, because you don't want to let San Antonio get fairly good field position where they can only, where they'd only have to throw one or two passes to get in field goal range. Well, they have 40 seconds to move it within range. Neuheisel will operate out of the shotgun. He has three wideouts. He goes to Gerald Crane and Crane has it. Crane has it at the 36 yard line. First down. Oliver Davis on the cover. As the gun players, the 34 seconds left, are moving downfield. Quite a play against the prevent defense where the secondary guys are very deep. Oliver Davis playing on the corner allows Daryl Crane, number 82, to catch the ball on the sideline. He did not get out of bounds. Clock starts. Less than 30 seconds left at the snap. New Heisel getting pressured, overthrows and incomplete. Pass intended for Don Roberts. Vito McKeever. Almost came up with the interception. The incompletion stops the clock with 24 seconds left. Ball is marked between the 36 and 37 yard line of the gunslingers. There is McKeever. Big pressure on New Heisel the last time from Willie Green, who was in at middle guard. 13 of 21 for 174 on the evening. A good night for New Heisel. Down the middle, incomplete. Off the hands of Joey Hackett, his tight end. Mike Edwards and As Will Copley were there to make sure that Hackett did not hold on. It is third down and 10. Just 19 seconds remain in regulation. Jim, with uh, 18 seconds left to play on this third down, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for the home run ball. They have just called timeout. Neuheisel, turns, calls timeout. And the uh, San Antonio gunslingers will talk over what they'll do on third and 10 with 19 seconds left. While they do, let you take this break. We'll be right back with the final 19 seconds of regulation. We pause, please. The situation, 19 seconds left regulation. Score tied. Gunslingers and Panthers, 17 apiece. Third and 10. Neuheisel in the shotgun. He sends Crane and Gordon, both of them split to the right. Roberts' fullback is in a slot left.
Over the middle, the pass is complete. Miner has it, I believe, out of the backfield. He's up short of the 50. Carlton Rhodes and Mike Edwards on the tackle. 12 seconds left. They're setting the chains before they start the clock. Ten seconds. New Heisel gets the ball. Again, Bonner has it inside the 45 to the 42 yard line. Timeout call. Mike Edwards once again on the coverage along with Tom Moriarty. Three seconds remain on the clock. Timeout. San Antonio. I believe they're going to leave it up to Nick Mickemeyer. Well, there's no question that they have a very strong win. But is the wind strong enough that he could kick probably 65 yards or something like that? 64 yards? It would be a 58-yard field goal if they go back seven from the line of scrimmage and tee it up at the 48. It would be a 58-yard field goal. The longest for Mickemeyer of the year is 48. They are not going this. They are going to Mickelmark. He has not tried one this season over 50. He will be teeing it up at the 49. So it will be a 59-yard attempt. Jimmy, something else to point out. We haven't seen John Corker in quite a while. He is the one guy that has blocked a lot of field goals for the Michigan Panthers, and he is not in the lineup. Kick is up. Short. Just short. Oh, my. Nick Mickemeyer almost won the game with a 59-yarder. Obviously, he got help from the wind, but no, it was short. But not by much. It actually just barely went under the, uh, the goal post. You won't be able to tell from this angle, but believe me, it was just short. There were a few people breathing very heavy on the Panther bench. Mickemeyer thought he had it. But he didn't. We go to overtime. Tied at 17. We'll be right back with a toss to the court. Nobody is leaving Alamo Stadium in San Antonio, and we hope you do not leave your television set. We have an overtime football game in the United States Football League. The Panthers have been in overtime once, and they won. Jim, we really didn't get a clear-cut indication of who won the, uh, the toss, but I think that the Panthers won the toss and chose to kick off and take the win. Novo Boyovic teeing it up at the 35-yard line. The Gunslingers will go deep with Mike Ulmer and Marcus Bonner. There you see Bonner coming into the picture. The Panthers are lining up as if they would be kicking it on side. Which they did at the start of the game. They did at the start of the game, and then they actually shift and get other people over to the one side of the ball. And the Panthers shift. Novo kicks it deep. Bonner, five yards in the end zone, will not return it. First and ten, San Antonio from the 20-yard line is Novo Boyovich. Kicks a non-returnable kickoff. You know, the interesting thing is Michigan scored both their touchdowns going against the win. They, they threw the touchdown to Mike Cobb, and they also threw the touchdown to uh, Anthony Allen going against the win, and they chose to kick off the ball with the win. And hi, everybody. This, think about. this is our broadcast position at Alamo Stadium, and we're glad you could join us for the second half of this game because it has been a good one, much different than the first half, which you missed, which we apologize for. New Heisel back. First play of overtime. Incomplete. Oliver Davis 
with the big hit on Jerry Gordon. Gordon could not hang on. It'll be second and ten. Pass intended for Jerry Gordon. Davis leads the team with four interceptions, and he has broken up a team leading seven passes. This is number eight. The eight-year pro out of Tennessee, Oliver Davis, ex-Cleveland Brown, does a good job of coming up and reacting to the quick pass. New Heisel attempt. Again, looking for Daryl Crane this Darryl time. Crane, the goes incomplete. Receiver. We have a change in the Panther defense. John Corker has not returned to the game. His position is taken now by Carlton Rose, a rookie out of the University of Michigan. Now Rose comes out, and Michigan comes in with the nickel. As Cottrell, Coakley, and Mike Edwards come into the game. Neuheisel operates out of the shotgun. Two wide outs and a slot back Roberts. Big rush. Rose intercepted. Oliver Davis may put it away. Michigan wins the football game on an Oliver Davis interception. Unbelievable. Number five on the year, and Davis gives Michigan the victory. Just 22 seconds had elapsed in overtime before Oliver Davis put this one into the wind column for the Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance this evening. Congratulations to the Michigan Panthers and to the Senators. This crowd is stunned. Oliver Davis, Dennis, does the job in coverage. Rick Neuheisel made one critical mistake that you never do as a quarterback. Throw an out pattern late. Oliver reacts to the ball. You see how far the pass had to travel. Davis had good position. He threw it right to him, and Oliver did a good job of getting up, running into the end zone. He got a good block there on Mike Edwards. Six points. The Panthers win, and their chances for the playoffs continue. Here's another angle. Rick Neuheisel throwing the ball clear across the field. Davis comes up. Good position. Intercepts the ball and turns it into a touchdown. By the way, the ball was intended for Don Roberts, number 43, and we will be back after these messages. Out across the 30. Had a pretty good seam up the middle that time. A nice return by Steve Carter to the 34-yard line. George Cooper coming in to make the stop.